rise for opening prayer and pledge of allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful spring morning that you have granted us another day of life. Today we have the opportunity to recognize and celebrate one of the blessings of life, our children. In Psalms, you tell us that children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. We know that our children are treasures from you. This morning we thank you for these young men that we'll be honoring for their athletic achievements. You have blessed them with talents to succeed. May they do so humbly and always represent their families and communities with class. Guide each one of these young men daily in their studies and choices. Lord, we also thank you for the coaches, the parents, and the families that dedicate their time and resources so our children can succeed. Guide these mentors as they influence these young men for a lifetime. We thank you for the coaches, the families, and the volunteers that are truly dedicated. And this morning, gracious God, we continue in prayer for those who are afflicted in so many ways from this virus. We know that you are a source of refuge and strength. Guide us through this agenda today that our decisions will have favor with you. They will be ones that benefit those who work and live in our beautiful valley. These things we humbly ask in your name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. We'll convene the Commissioner's public meeting at this time and ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 So carried. 
And we'll ask at this time for public comment on agenda items only. Mr. Yes. Stout. Yes, Larry Stout, representing the Clinton Township Volunteer Fire Company. First, I want to comment what what lengths some high school students go through to get out of school. I'm very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> but and I just want to comment to you, the whole county is proud. Uh, even though you are from Loyal Sock and I'm from Montgomery, but still, we're proud of you. Uh, but, but in reference to uh, line item 4.5, the purchase of the used ambulance safety equipment from Clinton Township Volunteer Fire Company, just a quick backstory to this particular vehicle and why I would really strongly encourage your uh, vote of approval. This was about a year ago that we decided to upgrade our fleet by acquiring a new pumper, and uh, that made this particular piece of equipment redundant. We assessed a value at somewhere around $25,000. we are going to use a, one of those outsource type uh, places where they sell it for you for a commission. Uh, so through the 2020, we were playing around, fixing it, you know, making it more saleable. And then it, it just, it, we thought, you know, we ought to really offer it to the, to the locals first to see if they might be interested. And the only one that put a bid on it was RMS, and it was for $15,000. We instantly said no, we couldn't afford that for the very simple reason that we took a hammer to our fundraising because of the closing of the banquet hall during the COVID. So we lost tens of thousands of dollars. We couldn't afford to lose 10K on this, on this truck, we just couldn't. But we had this you know, moral dilemma because we have such a good relationship with RMS. I mean, we have such a cooperation there. And, uh, and Al Little, the new safety director, it's, he's just been a godsend, it's just been uh, we train their people, they train us, and it's just it's just, just a great relationship. So we were just struggling, and finally I said, I volunteered, I, I, let me go out and just sit down and, and talk to Director Yorks, and you know, maybe squeeze a little something, and he explained the difficulty f that he faced, and that this was what they budgeted, as, they weren't thinking about this particular truck when they put it in the budget last year, that's all they have. Uh, they, to, to get more would mean they'd have to take it from somewhere else, and you know, that's everything is budgeted and they'd have to wait a year to get some more increase. And so I just said, well, Jason, yeah. so I went back and I just, without any comment, presented this to our membership and to a person, every single person said, this is worth goodwill. 10K is worth it because of the relationship. So uh, we just thought, you know what, we'll just give it to them for the 15 and uh, make it up just some other way because it's not worth to drag this out because they need it. It's gonna be an asset to us as well because good God forbid there's something would happen, there's already a piece there that we're familiar with, but, so it's it's win-win all the way around. And and to me it's kind of like, uh, you know, marrying off your daughter to your best friend. You know, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a sad thing, but it's a good thing. So please, I encourage you, please vote yes on line item 4.5, thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, we're moving on to 2.1. Um, we're presenting the proclamation to the Loyal Sock Lancers. Okay. Whereas we can quote basketball legend Michael Jordan as saying, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. And whereas the Loyal Sock Lancer boys basketball team and coach Ron Ensinger gave legs to that quote on March 27, 2021 by winning the uh, 2021 PA 3A state championships with a 26 and 1 record. Whereas while under the wing of coach Ensinger's 47 years of coaching experience, the Loyal Sock Lancers basketball team clearly demonstrated how a fundamentally rich team strategizes by playing with great determination and focus. And whereas the County of Lycoming, Pennsylvania would like to congratulate the Loyal Sock Lancers boys basketball team for their outstanding achievements and also thank them for modeling excellent teamwork amidst the daily challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the Loyal Sock Lancers 2021 boys basketball team continues to teach family, friends, classmates, fans of Lycoming County, Pennsylvania, the abundant lesson of intention and perseverance that working as a team can create boundless possibilities every day. And whereas now, therefore, the commissioners of the County of Lycoming hereby proclaim Tuesday, April 20th, 2021, as Loyal Sock Lancers Boys Basketball Pride Day. 
in honor of this championship team and encourage all citizens to join with us in celebrating this outstanding record-setting accomplishment. In witness of, we have set our hand and seal this 20th day of April 2021 by Cumming County Commissioner Scott Metzger, Chairman, Tony Macero, Vice Chairman, and Richard Marabito, Secretary. I just add a couple words. Um, winning a state championship is something that I, I never did. Uh, so I don't know the emotions that go through the minds of you, you students and excellent athletes. Uh, 47 years, it's a long time. And you know, it's not about the championship, it's about the lives that you have affected over those 47 years. You've influenced a lot of, a lot of children, a lot of young men, and women, I'm sure, uh, that you should take pride in. As far as the boys, it's an incredible season. And whether you won, or whether you lost, that, I mean, it matters, you know, uh, what was, uh, Scooby said, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, until you lose, okay? But what one thing you can't uh, take away, or you can take away from in a championship team, is your relationship with each other and how you worked as a team. And I'm, and I'm not sure how many people were surprised how far you went. I know some, some parents were out there saying, we will win, we, we just know it but it was because of your relationship with each other, a, a, a strong team. So we are proud of you, and thanks for all the time and effort, and I'm sure in the future, apply that as well in your occupation, and uh, you'll be successful. So we're here today to celebrate the team, we're also here to celebrate the coach, and I can tell you that uh, there are literally thousands of boys and girls across this state, as well as obviously in like Cumming County, who are totally thrilled and motivated by what you did. And um, as the commissioner said, it's something you'll carry through your whole life. What we hope is that you'll take all the lessons that you learned from Coach C, uh, Coach Insinger, and you'll try to use them in a way to bring other people along when you're both youth and adults. Always be looking. The way he looked in you, he looked in each one of you and he found how you contribute to the team. If you can take that and find a way to how people can contribute in our community and in the communities you go into, you're all gonna have successful lives and, we, and we're really proud of you, I, I can just tell you that. I'm not a basketball player, but I can imagine the excitement that you felt. So thank you, and we're excited to have you, and we hope you'll stay in like coming County, <laughs> because we need young people like you for tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. I want to talk about your accomplishments, what you did as a state, won a state title. You are a small school in Central PA. The coach can't go out and recruit players. It's you guys, you grew up together, you play together, you become friends, and you, you gel together, and you play as a team. And that's what I saw out of you, your team this year. I follow you close. I'm, I'm in the high school basketball. I played under Pete White. Our teams weren't very good back then. Um, my, my stepson played in Matoursville. He played for another good coach, and uh, he's playing at Lycoming now. So, and the nice thing about it is, is even though you, there's a robbery, I live on the other side of the Green Bridge. Even though there's robberies, you guys are friends after the games. You know, and, I, and, and Coach Randy there and I are good friends. And, uh, and that's the neat thing about it, through the sports, you develop these lifetime friendships. And uh, what you did on a statewide level, because it's tough to win any kind of high school championship unless you're a charter school. Charter schools can go out and recruit. And it's not fair, you've seen, you've seen how it's affected your, your program and uh, what happened with the girls two years ago, was it Jimmy? You know, what they faced, a charter school. They brought a player up from Virginia and it's really unfair. 
And uh, but what you guys have done is phenomenal. You're the elite of the state. You know, when you talk about Lawsock, you talk about basketball, you talk about baseball. You know, schools are known for certain things. And uh, you know, we always look forward to playing you because we know we're going to have a heck of a contest. And um, we, let's go back to Coach CI. It starts there. Coach Insinger, you've been with them for 47 years. You know, from anyone who coaches sports, especially high school sports, if you can survive parents for 47 years as school boards, <laughs> and that's a miracle. And uh, you've won 1,066 a, a games. You put that in perspective, that's like, um, you know, Coach Gino up in Connecticut, Coach D Dean and, and Coach Wooden, um, you know, Coach Knight, but you have it here in your backyard. Um, an average of 22 wins per year and 84% winning percentage. You're learning from the best. And he's also teaching life lessons. That's the most important thing about coaching. He's teaching life lessons. There's things that I learned uh, under Pete White that I carry today. Hard work, dedication, never giving up, and always working to achieve your goals. And, uh, you know, our prayers are with you guys to always make right choices. You're already on, already on the path to success. Be humble and continue to teach, teach the youth. You guys, you guys have young guys looking at you. You know, the kids down the elementary program, they're looking at you. They're looking at you as role models, and, and they model you. So, you know, continue to be examples like, like Coach Glunk. You know, he played for Coach, Coach CI, and, uh, and now he's giving back. So we thank you for being here today. You know, it was a no-brainer to honor you guys for what you did, and uh, thank you for being here. We'd like you to all come up and get a team picture. We'll give you your proclamation. And uh, you can take your mask off and we're getting our pictures. You know, we're gonna coach, we're gonna print the proclamation so that you can, we'll get them to you and you can get one to each each boy. They, not not the case, but the the proclamation they can have it. Sort of <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, from the bottom of our hearts, the school, Lawsop School District and the community and specifically the basketball team, thank you for uh, inviting us and saying such nice words. It, it touched my heart, it really did. So, uh, you know, the, your words will be remembered forever from these kids. Uh, 
Before I preface everything, it was so kind of you county commissioners to decorate in Law Sock colors. <laughs> <laughs> you really went out of your way to uh, make us feel welcome. <laughs> uh, you know, they have this whole cliche that everyone has heard. It takes a village to educate a child. Well, it takes a village to win a state championship, too. It's your support. Uh, Jerry McLaughlin, our district superintendent, has been unbelievably supportive uh, with athletics, with OM, with band, you know, the related arts. Uh, he, he supports completely. And trust me, uh, for 47 years I've been blessed to have a great school board and great administration that have supported us. So, uh, you know, tr trust me, I wouldn't be here had we not had all the support throughout the years. And uh, that means the world to the players, and that means the world to our community, and specifically to me, okay? Uh, but uh, we, uh, I've been blessed with outstanding uh, assistance. Randy's here today. Uh, Jimmy's one of my former players. Uh, you know, I've just had quality people. Th throughout the 47 years and uh, along with that I've had super coaches uh, I would I would be lying to you if I would take all the credit for preparing this team my assistants did all the work they really did they had them well prepared for the competition whether it be the charter schools or the public schools or the PHAC which is the league we play in so you know I I've been so honored to have great assistants all through my career that have gone beyond the call of duty to do the or take do the take the extra yard, and uh, that's why we're successful. Uh, these young men <laughs> are just super kids too. They're not only blessed athletes; they're uh, many of them are on the honor roll. Many of them are going to go on to the next level. Probably almost every one of them is going on to the next level. Uh, so uh, the best accolade I probably could give these young men is that I would be honored to take them home and call my son. They are truly family. We say family after every huddle breakdown, and uh, we really mean that. And I truly believe that we would not have won the state championship had we not been a family. Because instead of working as one, we worked as five. And, uh, and, and the, the other ten that weren't in the game were still clicking on all cylinders, cheering, uh, providing uh, acknowledgement when something good happened, keeping their mouths closed when they didn't have something good to say. So it was uh, a combination of things that uh, just led us to... Uh, you know, where, where they are today. Uh, another old saying, it's amazing how much can get accomplished when no one cares who gets a credit. These, there's no I in team. And one of my favorite ones is that at birth, we inherit one million, not dollars, but hours. It's how you invest your time that counts. And these young men have done a great job of investing their time wisely. Instead of being on the streets or doing something they shouldn't be doing, they were in the gym or they were they were working, trying to master the fundamentals of their game. And that speaks volumes of these kids. Uh, they, they have a passion, they love each other, and certainly the coaching staff loves them. So, um, again, I want to, do you want me to acknowledge? Yes, you can introduce yeah. each player. Okay. First young man is Brennan Clark. Brennan is a junior. Uh, he started a few games for us. Uh, would have started on any high school team in the area had he not been at Loyal Sock. Uh, Brennan has played his dues. He's played. He's gone against some of the best here, and we're expecting big things from him next year. When he did start, he filled some big shoes and and brought his A game. So we can count on Brennan. He's also a football player. His dad happens to be the head coach at Lake Cumming. And uh, so you know he's gonna play football at the next level. And uh, Brennan is also on our baseball team. Next young man has great bloodlines. It's Ryan Glunk. 
son of Randy. Uh, Ryan was a, a terrific football player this past fall. Sustained some injuries, and it's been injury after injury, and uh, we're hoping he's on the right track now. He's got some medical advice from a doctor from New York City, and uh, we think that, you know, I, I think he's going to be a pleasant surprise in central Pennsylvania next year. Uh, he only played a couple minutes because of his lower back injury this year, and uh, he's only a sophomore, so uh, he's got two years. I don't know if he'll catch Randy, since Randy scored 2,000 points, but he'll make the old college try anyway. Okay. Next young man is Nate Bowman. Uh, Nate's only a freshman. Uh, we have three super freshmen that are gonna, you're gonna hear a lot about in the next three years. They're outstanding students, they're outstanding players, and they've played with the best. And again, many of these kids would have started on a lot of local teams. Uh, Nate, uh, he has great work ethic, and uh, that's a big part of the integral issue we, we always deal with. So uh, he's, he's going to be a good one. All right. Next young man is Jaden. Jaden is uh, Jaden Ross. Jaden is a junior, uh, very blessed, very talented. Uh, his older brother Gerald was a thousand point scorer for us, and Jaden will be in and running for a lot of playing time next year. Uh, played a great role model this year, uh, a vocal leader on off the court as well as on the court, and. Uh, you know, that doesn't go on no notice. His encouragement and inspiration and was a big plus for us all the way through. Uh, Brandon Miller, Braden Miller, I'm sorry, Braden. Uh, Braden uh, is a junior also, and Braden played sparingly for us this year. He was hampered by injuries. He had knee injuries, ankle injuries, a little bit of everything. Uh, didn't practice, missed all of preseason. Uh, now he's in baseball and doing well, so uh, we're hoping that Braden works hard this summer and he's ready to produce next fall. Let's see, back in the corner here is Gage Patterson. Gage, stand up, because I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> I tease Gage, but he is, he's a real deal. He's gonna be, he is too a freshman, uh, and is gonna be an excellent guard. Uh, I think he's gonna grow. We hope he's going to grow. We, he's, I saw him at the uh, vitamin store the other day picking up some pills, so I think he's on his way to uh, getting larger. Uh, but anyway, Gage uh, is uh, one of our pride and joys. He's going to be a good one. Okay, next one is Sean Jensen. Sean is going to uh, the University of Pittsburgh in the fall. He, uh, he too, was a starter. Uh, just arguably one of our most improved players. He, uh, Sean uh, stepped in when Siraj, one of our stars, was hurt and uh, really filled some big shoes. He, uh, and there will come some games where he led the team in rebounding, some games he led the team in points, some games uh, he just was won the, all the loose balls, the 50-50 balls, so uh, he really stepped it up when we needed him. And, uh, we appreciate that, and uh, our team didn't skip a beat when we had one of our best players out for about 10 games. Next young man is Grayson. Grayson is, it was his first year since seventh grade that he played basketball, it's Grayson Watkins. Uh, Grayson's going to Penn College in the fall, uh, but Grayson, I just can't say enough good things about him. He rode the pine a lot. He was injured a lot, but he, even when he was injured, and he had some serious injuries, uh, he never ever missed a practice. He was there for the three, two and a half hours, day in and day out, even though he wasn't reaping any dividends, he wasn't getting any quality playing time. But uh, if, if, he came, if he was a junior and came out next year, he would easily start because he has got talent. He is, a, he is very good. And I, I always was in the comfort zone with Grayson because we had him in the back pocket. So if someone, God forbid, if someone went down in the state championship game or any game for that matter, we knew Grayson was there to fill some shoes. Uh, 
Next one is Ty. Ty is also, uh, Tyler is also a freshman and one of our super freshmen. Uh, Ty, Tyler G is a, going to be a star in probably three sports, football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, he's already starting on the varsity baseball team and uh, he is just doing a, a, a tremendous job and he's a sponge. He soaks everything in. Coach only has to tell him something once and it's it's a done business. So uh, we, it's going to be a joy coaching uh, Tyler for the next three years. Next gentleman is Randy Glunk, my assistant. Uh, Randy, Jeff Everett is the other assistant. Uh, but Randy uh, is a 2,000 point scorer for Law Sock. Uh, Lee, he's the highest scorer ever. And uh, he is just, he never misses a practice. He works down the hall here, or down the street here. Uh, Social Security, uh, he gets here on time. And uh, he's a great liaison between the players and myself. And uh, he's well respected, obviously. His name's up on the wall. And uh, he, is, he was a, bless, a blessing to coach, and now I'm just thrilled to have him on my staff. Uh, the other gentleman that isn't here is Jeff Everett, and Jeff is just a master coach. He, he, he excels at teaching the X's and O's, and uh, he spends a lot of time working, uh, checking out the films and so on. So, uh, as I said before, I'm I'm so thrilled to have Jeff on board because he we wouldn't be where we are today without Jeff and Randy. Okay, and the last young man over there is Jerry McLaughlin, our superintendent. As you all well know, uh, Jerry was my assistant coach for ten or eleven years before he came superintendent, uh, and just he's, he too knows the game inside and out, and was a great coach for us. And more important, his support, day in and day out, goes unnoticed. He is always there for us, hardly misses a game, and uh, uh, the, the players see him there. And how many times do you see a superintendent at basketball games? So uh, he takes the time away from his family to support us. And uh, once again, you know, he's, he's, he's doing what a lot of people don't want to do. And... Uh, that's the difference between these young men do a lot of things that other people don't want to do. And then in the summers, when their friends are at the beach or home at the swimming pool, these kids are in the hot gym or they're in tournaments on weekends or they're in summer leagues in the evenings and they're doing the things in the summer. It's, it's, it's a 365 day job and they're not afraid to do that. Uh, and. Uh, their passion goes without saying. And then they, they love being there. And uh, I always challenge them to wear out the, the gun, which is a shooting machine. Uh, and uh, well, it, it, their shooting proves that. Uh, la uh, the last row, I got some superstars. First one's Eli Gare. Eli is one of the boys who attempts to wear out that gun. He, he made the winning shot a year ago uh, against Camp Hill at the buzzer and put us into the uh, Eastern semis, which we never played because of COVID. But uh, that he's, that shot just springboard Eli into bigger and better things. He was, wasn't a starter last year. In fact, he played JVs. But this year, he was a starter every game and uh, he paid his dues in the summer. Even though the nets weren't, the rims weren't on the basket, some parts, and uh, we weren't allowed in the gym, uh, he he found a way, some place, to practice, and uh, he proved himself that practice makes perfect, or at least practice makes you better. Okay. Uh, next young man is Adris Ali. He's our Mister Everything. He's my coach on the floor. He is selfless. He is a, a, a great point guard. He makes that entry pass to perfection. He's uh, just a quiet leader, a, a great student. Um, 
he's flirting with going perhaps to prep school or there are a lot of he could play at um, a lot of schools right now but he he has to make up his mind here shortly what he's going to do at the next level but he'll be playing basketball someday someplace for someone okay uh Idris is uh he's going to be tough to replace he's just highly skilled and um he too you know he he he's a gym rat next young man is his brother Siraj Ali so by the way uh uh Idris he should be the triple A player of the year. Okay, whether that will come out in a couple of weeks from the associate press, but uh, yeah, he, he should be uh, put on a pedestal because he deserves it. Next gentleman is Siraj. Siraj led us in rebounding. He was, he was hampered by injuries for about 10 games. We didn't play at all, uh, but he bounced back. Again, he was one that was at practice every night. Uh, worked even though he was injured. Um, he he's a great kid. To, I'm the luckiest coach in the world because I have him to build a team around next year. So he's gonna he he is excellent inside. He's almost unstoppable inside. And more importantly, defensively, he played some of the best college. A lot of D1 players on our journey to states, and he did a great job. He outplayed. The guys that were going to LSU and uh, I don't forget some of the other schools, but he uh, he did a job on them. So uh, we're thrilled to have him back. Next gentleman is Dominic Dom Jennings. Dom is well, you, if you watch the state championship game, he lit him up as he did many games. Uh, Dom is probably going to go to St. Vincent College out in Pittsburgh next in September and uh, he will be playing basketball there. Yeah, coaches love shooters, and it's kind of a lost start now. You know, the days of scoring 2,000 are almost over, uh, but Dom can flat out shoot, and that's a credit, that, that's not an accident. He worked hard to get there. He, uh, he paid his dues, as many of them did, and uh, he just, he wasn't blessed with all the natural ability that some of the boys are, but he outworked people. His mentality was, you know, you may be better than me. God may have given you more talent than you gave me, and I'll outwork you and I'll catch you. And he, that he did. And I'll take that any day. So uh, Dom also was a defensive specialist. He was first team all-conference in defense. And, uh, you know, he just, his aggression uh, was kind of osmosis. It, it just spread to all the other guys. And... Uh, he, uh, when he played hard, we didn't have to worry about losing. Okay, last but not least is our big man, kind of a gentle giant, uh, Julian Wilson. Julian uh, went out for football this past fall, and I, I sincerely think it complimented his basketball game because uh, he, it made him more athletic and it made him more aggressive. He's going to go to Lackawanna Junior College on a football scholarship. But uh, getting back to basketball, I firmly believe we would not have won the state championship had it not been for Julian. He didn't start a lot of games, never complained. He knew his role, and he played it to the nth degree. Uh, he came off the bench some games. He started some games. He contributed every game, uh, whether it be block shots, rebounds, slams, he did it. And uh, you know, we were we were a much better group because of Julian. Okay. okay. Um, that being said, thank you for the time and again we are blessed that the county commissioners thought of us and that you acknowledge recognize us it it means a lot to all of us. And if you talk to any of these guys, and I think they're a class act, but the first thing that would come out of their mouths would be a big thank you. Yeah. We know academics is really important, so if you excuse us.
Yeah, just guys, guys on the way back, make sure the coach stops at Rita's and takes care of you before you get back to class, okay? Dolly, there you go. Sorry, coach. That goes to the coach. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, recognition for her 20 years uh, with the sheriff's office. Sheriff. Sure. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, sorry, I was a little late. I was at LEA. I had to get them straight first. <laughs> uh, I apologize. This award should have been uh, done when Eileen tried to schedule it, but but I'm always the person that screws everything up. So, Candy has a little more than 20 years now, probably closer to 21. <laughs> uh, she's been uh, with the sheriff's office and with the county. Uh, it's one of those employees that we talk about. I know uh, Commissioner Mirabile talks about the long-term employees and how valuable they are. When you think about an employee who's here 20 years and the amount of work an employee does uh, at 20 years, uh, you add the hours up, you take 2,000. You know, if, if, if you don't consider the pool leave time they're off, you take 2,000 hours a year. 20 years, talking 40,000 hours. Um, and what's interesting about our, our clerical staff, and it, it, it works this way for the deputies because typically you get breaks. You get breaks during the day. I will tell you I have clerical staff, although Roxanne HR would probably, would probably send me an email and say don't do that. Um, there are times they just don't take the break when they're supposed to take the break, and they work through the break. And there's times they work through their lunch because the nature of the beast with the sheriff's office is we have to react when the court has certain uh, areas of concern, especially expeditious areas that we need to, to get taken care of. So Candy sits as our number two uh, clerical supervisor. Um, she gets the, uh, the fortune of dealing with me when Christy isn't there. And she's always really happy when Christy is there because when Christy's not there, then Kenny's in my office. She uh, she actually she actually takes care of what we call civil division. Um, she will uh, the, the, the litigation that comes in, the services that we do, she oversees those uh, those areas. For a long time, for a long time, she dealt with uh, the Second Amendment stuff that we deal with, the license to carry. I actually go to Candy when I need to have something looked at in Chapter 61 of Title 18, the Uniform Firearms Code, uh, to ask her an interpretation from her of, do we give the gun back, do we not give the gun back, how does this relate to the court order? And PFAs, she was uh, on the PFA side for a very long time um, and took care of all that. And when you consider, when I first arrived in the Sheriff's Office in 2010, our first abuses, or our first PFAs, our initial PFAs, um, were around 200. In 2020, we served 400. We've doubled our, our first abuse PFAs by, uh, by, well, by double in 10 years, which sadly kind of shows the state of, of the domestic side of life. So Candy gets really involved in all those really tricky issues of interpreting those kinds of orders and, and how we deal with weapons and then uh, her other area of responsibility is the training, uh, and we really made a concerted effort to do cross-training that the commissioners have always encouraged us to do, and that makes sense. So when a clerk is out, uh, code was an example, we had staff out different times, we were able to fill that void because other clerical staff were able to 
to fill in and we're able to manage. So with that, since there's another presentation and, and uh, the controller is trying to control me by telling me don't be too long, um, with that we'll, we'll ask Candy to come up, I guess, Commissioner, your comments from the commissioners, I yeah. guess. Candy, you like to say anything? Sure she would. <laughs> come on up. Talk nice about me. <laughs> say whatever you want. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Sure. No, yeah, 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 you have to go over there. Yeah. Um, I'm just um, happy that I have a job working for the county. Like I'm, I've been here 20 years, 10 with Sheriff Flosk and 10 with um, Sheriff Brewer before that. 12. Um, 12. 12. This is 12 for me. <laughs> See what I have to put up with. <laughs> But I just want to say thank you for this award, um, and I'm um, just happy to serve, you know, do my job and do it to my be the best of my ability. Thank you. I get yelled at if I don't do it, so she needs to come up. The mouth, the, the mouthpiece and spokesperson, the one who can tell me what to do anytime she wants to and she gets away with it, is our office manager, Christy Shemp. So you come on up here. And you can talk, and it better be kind. Come up here. Come on, you're not going to hide behind the mask. Put you on the spot. That's what I do best. No pressure. Good morning. Uh, he put me on the spot. <laughs> Now, I just want to say congratulations to Candy. Um, I've been with Candy a long time, and um, thanks to the commissioners for giving her this award. Um, she does a great job in the office, and um, hopefully when I'm gone, um, she can have Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, and congratulations to Candy. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. I worked directly with you when I was next door. Um, the, the nice thing about Candy always has a smile on her face. And even when she's having a bad day, she always has a smile on her face. She's dedicated. She does a fantastic job. She has a very tough. I mean, when you're when you're dealing with gun permits, you're dealing with PFAs, you're dealing with those kind of those kind of issues. They're very stressful. Um, you have emotions. You have people's rights to firearms and uh, you do a fantastic job. So thank you for your service to the county. Uh, it's always a joy to see you, and you always brighten somebody's day when you run into them because you always have something nice to say, and you always have your smile on your face. So thank you. Candy, you should come to the podium so the public can see you because that's where the camera is. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, you're very humble, and you've really done a service for the people in this community. The, the sheriff talked about the areas that you uh, cover and those are very passionate for people. They're Second Amendment rights. Very passionate. So don't underplay the important role you've played for 20 years in keeping people in a situation where they, as, as, uh, as our chairman said, they're very concerned about it, but also in doing what's right and being a resource for the sheriff to be able to turn to you and say, hey, you know, in that statute, what do we have to do in this situation? So we do value the 20 years, and we do appreciate uh, that you've done that and that you've stayed with us. We look forward to you for many more years. Thank you. You're welcome. And you know the characters you have to put up with, so. <laughs> but uh, you girls, all of you, do an excellent job. It's, it's not an easy department, uh, by no means, but... Uh, there always seems to be, you know, camaraderie in that office. Mm -hmm. uh, you have everybody's backs, and uh, today it's, an, it's not an easy, easy times uh, for any law enforcement. So, uh, thanks for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Like to get a picture with you too.
turn on the light. Let's let the get married. It's our wedding picture. <laughs> Jeez, don't just shut it down. She's going to have nightmares. Don't worry, baby. Treasure said that. You're a runaway All right, up next, we're moving on to accounts payable cash requirements report. Any questions or comments? Krista, are you you're going to present? Oh, okay. Come on up, please. Mm -hmm. Um, the total report is for the check and voucher total is eight hundred and seventy thousand one hundred and forty dollars and forty four cents and the breakout is on the cover sheet that was sent over to you mm -hmm. if you have any questions I don't have any questions Commissioner? So, so um, it, it's interesting, uh, over 205000 to the energy power investment, that's a, that's a reimbursement from the landfill. It is a check that's being cut and then it comes back? Right. right. The, sale. Um, the PA unemployment compensation, 111000 These are all checks that are being cut? Okay. Just so you're aware. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none, could I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to action items. Action item 4.1 with uh, Director McDermott voting on verification of complaint. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm seeking your approval on the verification of complaint, and I'll go ahead and read it. And now, uh, this 20th day of April, 2021, uh, we, Scott L. Metzger, Tony Armisair, and Richard Marabito, the duly elected commissioners of Lycoming County, uh, depose and say that the facts set forth in the foregoing complaint are true and correct to the best of our knowledge, information, and belief, and that we are duly authorized to execute this verification on behalf of the Lycoming County, or the County of Lycoming, in our official capacity as duly elected County Commissioner. We understand the full statements herein made are subject to the penalties of 18 PA state, uh, Section 4904 relating to unsworn falsification to authorities. At the end of the day, uh, this verification of complaint uh, is in reference to a legal complaint that we filed today in court uh, concerning the transfer of functions from the controller's office to the Office of Budget and Finance. I, I think it's worth just specifically stating that, and you can correct me, that we have indications that the controller might withhold signature on certain checks that have to go out, and the uh, action we're filing today is to ensure that the checks go forth. And if you want to correct me, if I'm... You're correct, Commissioner. Yeah. So that's, that's why we're taking this legal action today, to ensure that payments are made to employees and others, <clears throat> and that the process of the county business continues. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. I just want to make a statement. There is an article that was on the uh, northcentralpa.com last Thursday, <clears throat> and the controller quoted, they are trying to create a shadow government to control county finances. If they do this, does that mean they can take staff from the district attorney, create their own law office, take staff from the coroner, 
create their own morgue, take staff from the sheriff, create their own police department, she stated. This is not a power grab. We have no intentions of taking power from any department. However, according to our statute that we're responsible for, we are ultimately resp responsible for county finances. That is the commissioner's role, and we will do so to make sure Conchor is there to audit those. These responsibilities lied prior in the fiscal office and were transferred over. They're not being done accurately because the train's not available. It has not been administered by the controller over the last two years. So it's vital that we move things back in order to make sure that ultimately our financial obligations are taken care of. And that is the commission's responsibility. And no time is this a power grab on any department or intended to be a power grab in the future on any department. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. 4.2, my tune acknowledging the list of contracts for the month of March by the Director of Administration. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, for the month of March, we had nine contracts that are before you that were uh, below $10,000 and signed on behalf of the Director of Administration. Any comments on those contracts? Hearing none, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. 4.3, Jennifer McConnell voting on vote to submit the Lycoming County Probation with Restrictive Conditions Grant application. Um, Jennifer, are you on the line? I am. Okay. Morning, Jen. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, as Eileen said, this is Jennifer McConnell, the Director of Court Services with the Office of District Court Administrator. Thank you for letting me call in. I'm actually participating in a training with Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency currently, so this makes it very easy for me to do both things today. Um, this morning I am presenting the annual grant application that will be submitted to the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency for the fiscal year 2021 through 2022, and the funding source is titled the Intermediate Punishment Treatment Program. <clears throat> It's important to just note that I do annually present this grant application to you. Lake Homing County is partnering in together with our single county authority, West Branch Drug and Alcohol Abuse Commission, will be requesting $380,000 to continue to support the Lake Homing County probation with restrictive conditions treatment programs. Um, just so that you know that those programs consist of two separate programs. One is the Lacoming County Probation with Restrictive DUI Conditions that targets offenders that are convicted of driving under the influence. And the second program is to help support uh, an ongoing support of the Lacoming County Treatment Courts, specifically just the drug and DUI courts. This funding source is, as I tell you every year, is an annual allocation in the Commonwealth budget. Lake Homing County has been applying and implementing these funds, I believe, since the late 1990s. Um, the grant funds support the programs and the program costs, which include drug and alcohol testing, treatment services, uh, consulting costs that are billed by our SEA to help provide treatment case management, the salary and benefits of one adult probation officer to provide intensive supervision of these individuals sentenced to this program, transdermal alcohol detector costs, along with other program costs like education, materials and resources, graduation supplies, right up to medication assisted treatment and related physician costs. It's really important to understand that this is a, an annual allocation and that the Commission on Crime and Delinquency actually establishes the amount that we and other counties are allowed to apply for. 
it's important to note that we are requesting the maximum allowable amount of three hundred and eighty thousand um, dollars and it's also important to know that pccd along with the legislatures and legislation actually dictates what we can spend this, these grant monies on and it is specific to support these types of probation programs um, specifically geared towards treatment costs and that we're not permitted to spend them elsewhere the only other thing I'd like to make sure that I note is this program, we work very closely with West Branch Drug and Alcohol to utilize medical assistance matching uh, money. And usually we probably take advantage of about $300,000. So we are not applying for those, but in total then what that makes this cost of this program about $600,000 annually to operate. I did a very quick, um, assessment last week just looking at jail day safe because typically these individuals would be serving longer jail sentences and annually we save and this is a very I think low estimate we save well over about a million and a half dollars by putting these folks out on intensive probation and providing them treatment instead of housing them in our prison do you have any questions no, thank you. I think you thoroughly explained it. I, I have, Jen. This is Commissioner Mayor Vito. Sure. Um, so you know, in the in the intro to the program, it mentions that um, part of the goals is to reduce alcohol and drug abuse, and part is to reduce recidivism. Correct. Do you have any? Um, and and you may not have it for us now, but do you have any indications? You you did mention it saves a million and a half. Has it has it helped to keep? Um, people from reabusing these are very serious alcohol offenders right sure. I mean, Correct. They're, they're facing mandatory treatment has have we got any good stories of people who have been able to stop drinking or get their lives together we have numbers on that or on the recidivism yeah and actually i'm glad that you asked that i don't actually have the specific numbers in front of me but just two weeks ago we had partnered at uh, two years ago out of this grant we contracted with Bloomsburg University and they did a very intensive evaluation of now just our drug and DUI court um, and recidivism one of was one of those factors that they took a closer look at I will be honest with you I just scheduled a meeting to sit down with the judges um, tomorrow to start reviewing that but typically we are well under the 20% recidivism rate. So what that means is 80% of the individuals who come through these programs, about that percentage, um, usually within two to three years uh, are sh still showing success. Um, and they're reintegrating back into the community. <clears throat> so we have a very low recidivism rate with these types of intensive probation programs. Well, that's, that's good to hear because for a lot of these folks, these are people who have habitual DUI, so it's keeping the right. community safe, but it's also helping them restore their lives so it's not lost, you know. So thank you for that. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve the application for the grant. A second. All in favor, aye. Aye. So carried. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. 4.4, Adrian Stahl, voting on the agreement with uh, Trisha Hoover, Jasper Esquire, in the amount not to exceed $40,000. Good morning, Commissioner. This morning. is Adrian. I am here requesting approval of a professional services agreement with Trisha Hoover Jasper. Um, this is a renewal of her current conflict attorney contract and it is a budgeted expense. This is for legal representation of defendants where the PD's office has a conflict. It's a one-year contract to accept 65 new cases in exchange for $40,000 compensation paid in monthly installments. She currently is one of two conflict attorneys. Historically, we've had um, this arrangement with four conflict attorneys we just lost one who's re not re not renewing her contract um, this month so the remaining conflict attorneys are Trisha Hoover Jasper and Gina Longo currently and then we are just outsourcing on a case-by-case -case basis at an hourly rate with the other conflict cases until we're able to secure another conflict attorney any questions 
So, this is Commissioner Maravito, just for the public's sake, just quick explain what kind of conflict might be. I noticed that this particular attorney appears to be um, designated for Judge Lavecchio's uh, services. But if that it's at least an exhibit A it says uh, or represented. But is yeah. it is it for more than that? If it was judges, that could be criminal cases. Yeah. Sure. N no, the reference about Judge Lavecchio, um, it's so his office, his secretarial um, staff, Becky Loner, she um, assigns the conflict attorneys. He's, he's not involved in that. Okay, um, I get so it. She's doing the administrative part of it. Yeah, now he signs all of the orders okay. appointing the conflict attorneys. Um, but this is for any case, whether it's at a magisterial district judge level, which is typically where they would start the criminal cases, um, or a dependency case at the common pleas level. So, for instance, in a criminal case, there could be two co-defendants acting together, the PD's office would represent one of those defendants and then it would be a conflict for them to represent the second defendant, so we would have to get conflict counsel that's separate from the PD's office. So those attorneys contract with the courts. Um, we appoint them and pay their monthly invoices um, if they're on an hourly basis or they get the monthly installment as far as Trisha Hoover, Jasper, and Gina Longo. So they agree to accept 65 new cases, plus they're continuing, because this is a renewal, um, they're continuing to represent those um, individuals that they've been appointed to in the prior year. And you know, as we know, criminal cases can definitely exceed one year. <laughs> um, so in any event, um, yes, it's not limited to just Judge Lavecchio's, the cases he presides over. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, hearing no further comment, I have a motion to accept the agreement. I move to approve. I second. All there, Cy? Aye. Aye, so carried. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Jason Yorks has um, 4.5, 4.6, 7, and 4.8. Jason? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioners, good morning. Good morning. Uh, for you for item 4.5. Vote on the purchase of the safety vehicle ambulance for Clinton Township Volunteer Fire Company in the amount of fifteen thousand uh, dollars plus uh, registration and transfer costs. Commissioners, uh, last year we met with you in our budgeted season and we spoke of trying to get all of our safety equipment, our confined space, our SCBAs, all the equipment that we use for situations we have in a trailer that we'd have to, with the response, we always have to try to find a ball to hitch up to to get to a truck. Uh, we had brought before you last year for the budget to find a vehicle that had a utility box system that we could start storing it. Um, once, as uh, Larry Stout had mentioned already this morning, uh, with Al Little on board here, we started moving forward with that project, trying to find and locate. With our relationship that we have with our local fire companies, we did find this uh, 1994 with the utility box system that Clinton Township has. Uh, Larry went on to discuss about the difference in cost. Uh, Larry and I did have a fantastic meeting uh, discussing the difference in price and the value. As a volunteer firefighter myself, uh, as an EMT, I also belong to the TIDOT and Forest Fire uh, Wardens Association is Task Force 83. All my volunteer associations suffered like um, losses through revenues, and we're always trying to make it up. So I am incredibly sensitive to any losses that volunteer fire companies uh, suffer, and I, I offered to make it up to them through the way of offering uh, that you can have free water for pool fillings. So the volunteer fire companies are able to go out and fill the pools for their local residents. They can, um, Clinton Township and Montgomery can come here, get the water. Uh, we provide them the water for their tankers, and then they can go and offer the service. And that's a, an opportunity for fundraising. The fundraising that we've all lost, mainly our gun parties and bingos and so forth, You know, we have not been able to resume them, and that does hurt. Uh, so. As uh, I bring it before you, uh, I do appreciate Larry's support and uh, Chief Winder's support on this purchase. 
Uh, I think it'll make a great addition here at RMS. We will have the ability, it comes with lights, generator, uh, the ability to support any kind of operation in the evenings in the dark. It'll give us an opportunity to get out of the weather if we have the blueprints to look at on a force main or, or there is a sustained situation where you have to set up a command post. So this brings us a lot of opportunity. So for your approval, commissioners, is a 2021 budgeted item for $15,000. Okay, any questions or comments? Well, I want to say thank you to the township and to the folks in the township for being, and for the fire company, for being so uh, generous in, in being able to shave off $10,000. The uh, county appreciates that, Mr. Stout. You mentioned it, and we certainly want to thank Mr. Winder from the fire company there and all the volunteers okay can I have a motion I move to approve I'll second all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. so carry thank you thank you commissioner item 4.6 is the repair and undercarriage rebuild of a 2012 V8 dozer and the amount of Approximately 50. This is an estimated amount, but this is what we plan it to be $59,260.67. Commissioners, this is for the part, uh, it is a 2021 approved budgeted item as we brought before you last May or June for 2020. We discussed by hours, we decide what piece of machinery is typically in need of rebuilt. This machine has 5,000 hours on it and it does need its um, normal pair of undercarriage so uh, this is through Cleveland Brothers for a V8 and $58,260.67. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Can I second? All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Commissioner's item 4.7 is a simple amendment to the agreement that we do have with Cleveland Brothers. Um, the original agreement was in 2017. We, the contract expires in 2026. We, with this labor rate that's before you, they are a state co-star set of labor rates. We, um, we went from trying to negotiate with Cleveland Brothers uh, with purchasing, trying to work with, do work with Maya's uh, purchasing department, uh, we have really been starting to lean on the co-stars, the um, trying to think some of the other state contracting services that are available to us to help make it easy. So these rates are already on co-stars and they're already vetted through the state purchasing program. So we just simply are copying those rates and now making an amendment for, for us to use. Okay, any questions or comments? Hearing none, time of motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Aye, so carry. Thank you, Commissioners. Last item is 4.8. This is a repair of final driver basement on the left side of our 2019 GAT dozer, at dozer. This amount of $17,668.46. This is a worst case budgeted item uh, repair cost. We now are looking at, we probably will not, we'll be able to re have the final drive rebuilt uh, at a much lower cost, but as when we do these, we typically go for a wor uh, worst case scenario. So the worst case, we had to completely replace that whole section, it'd be 17668.46 um, for your approval. And this is through, uh, again, we'd be purchasing the final drive piece it, it is proprietary for a D8 Caterpillar, but we buy it through Cleveland Brothers. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, motion. I'll move to approve. All right, second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, Jason. Commissioner, thank you for your time today. Yeah. 4.9, Jenny Picciano voting on amendment to subrecipient agreement, monitoring agreement with 
greater Lycoming habitat for humanity. Jenny? Hi, good morning, Commissioners. Um, morning. The first item is a six month grant extension um, to extend the term of the subrecipient agreement from April 1st, 2021 to October 1st, 2021. Uh, we have an agreement with Habitat for Humanity for $55,000 for construction of their Diamond Street home in Williamsport. Um, and this is with um, 2019 FAIR dollars. FAIR is the Pennsylvania Housing Affordability and Rehabilitation Enhancement Fund. And we are seeking the extension approval because um, Habitat has experienced delays in the program due to COVID and the cost of construction. Okay, any questions or comments? Here you not got a motion. I move to approve. Second. All in favor, side. Uh, All right. So carried. Thank you. Jenny also has 4.10. Sure, this extension is a three month grant extension request from April 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2021. And that's for the American Rescue Workers. Um, they have a fair grant in the amount of $100,000 for their rental assistance program. And the extra three months will give them time to finish the spending the last of the funds for that program. Okay, can I have a motion? I move to approve. All fair side? Uh, so carried. Thank you. Thank you. And Jenny lastly has 4.11 resolution 2021-06. Sure. So commissioner, this is a one of the final items for the Silverdell project with the Penbest grant. Um, this is a res resolution designating me um, to act as the technical coordinator for the PennVest grant. Um, Joshua Billings, our former subdivision um, administrator, had been um, designated as that role for the county, but when he retired a few weeks ago, um, it became apparent that we needed another agent or um, signer from the county to act as that um, person from the county. So this would um, officially designate me to help finish up the grant and um, clear that grant on behalf the county. Jenny, this won't take a lot of, of your time, correct? <laughs> no, it's, it's basically a, a few clicks right, okay. um, on my form. All right. Thank you. I have a motion? I move to approve. I'll second. I'm on fair side. Aye. Aye. So carry. Thank Four, you, Jenny. Sorry, excuse me. Thank you. 4.12, Shannon Rossman voting on agreement with Larson Design Group. Thank you, Shannon. Good morning, Commissioner. Shannon morning. Rossman, Planning and Community Development. Uh, before you have an agreement with Larson Design Group to uh, finish the access design for the first phase of the Timber Run Industrial Park, and then also um, work with PENDA on getting the HOP, Highway Occupancy Permit, for the uh, first phase of the Industrial Park. And they'll also be coordinating the RFP for the construction. Okay. And we're, uh, where are the funds coming from for this? Uh, Act 13. Yeah. Act 13. So for the public, this is important. The commissioners are trying to put the infrastructure in place so that we can get additional companies to come and, and uh, bring jobs to the area. We, we have one or two that look like they're coming, and that's, that's what our long-term goal is. So. Yeah, this initial is for the, um, to coordinate everything for the, the digger project. Mm -hmm. Right. Which uh, we're just waiting on the date for the closing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it seems like everything's moving forward. It's just mm -hmm. taking a while to get all the paperwork together. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion to accept. I'll second. Don't fear sign. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, we have 4.13 John Lavelle voting on resolution 2021-07. John. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, John. Um, <clears throat> so this is the uh, this resolution is to adopt the Wyoming County Hazard Mitigation Plan. It's the uh, third update of, of the plan itself, uh, which which happens at five year intervals. Um, this plan covers all 52 municipalities within Wyoming County and details natural hazards um, as well as man made hazards that, that might impact our, our population. Uh, our constituents and, and our visitors. Um, and uh, specifically in this plan, um, we've updated uh, some of the hazard profiles, including wildfires, 
pandemic, which, which hits on actually a, a few other of our hazards, um, and basically the, the shifting of activities to outdoor uh, uses and, and how that also impacts public safety. Um, and we have a, a really nicely detailed landslide section, obviously, that's, that's something that's impacting our transportation system currently. Um, so what we're, we're asking is, is that the commissioners adopt the plan today um, and then I'll be reaching out to all our, our uh, partners, um, each municipality over the next two to three months to get them to also adopt the plan to get that turned into FEMA. Um, the adoption doesn't necessarily require a specific action of any of the municipalities or, or any type of investment, but um, it acknowledges that they're aware of, of these hazards and, and the possibilities uh, for them to arise in the future. And the other thing that this does is it is enables um, Lycoming County and its partners to access um, post-disaster funds um, uh, when needed to, to mitigate some of these issues. Okay, any questions or comments? Carrie, now I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Uh, second. On fair side. Uh, All right, so carried. Thank you, John. Thank you. Do you want to move on to Commissioner Comment or? Yeah, let's go back to Bluss. Chair Bluss. Where, where, did he, where did he disappear to? Chair Bluss? Mm -hmm. I think he's outside. Okay. This gentleman has been waiting all morning. Thank you for your patience. Our sheriff has evaporated. Here he comes. Here he comes. Eileen. All right, so we're going back to 2.2. .2. Sheriff Lusk, Lusk is recognizing local clubs and veterans for their support and donations to help purchase the UTV for the Sheriff's Office. Sheriff? Good morning again, Commissioners and uh, those attending. About two years ago, uh, there was uh, some discussion about uh, the function, use, and, and the need of a uh, UTV-type vehicle. UTVs, it's interesting that uh, Director York talked about the fire service um, and the equipment that they have. UTVs are typically used in a fire service, um, and then they kind of propagate into the law enforcement community uh, in a number of ways. And some of the ways they're used are for special events, uh, natural disasters, and then in our application for situations such as uh, fugitives who escape. Um, we know the special events uh, that occur in this county. Uh, typically we focus on the larger special events when we provide a level of support that we're able to at the county level and in local law enforcement. And that would be the Jersey Shore Town Meeting uh, on the west side of the county, uh, the Lycoming County Fair on the east side of the county. Uh, obviously the marquee event, uh, which we did not have last year due to COVID, which was Little League World Series. Um, and then smaller venues such as the Newberry Lions Fair. Um, in addition to the special events, we talk natural disasters. And those of us that have lived in this county all of our lives, we know what that's about. I think I've been part of uh, a command operation for around 15 um, moderate or major flooding events in the county. Just as the sheriff, I know we've assisted uh, Jersey Shore, Hughesville, Plunkett's Creek, Warrensville, Trout Run, Ralston, um, Ole Cumming, Hepburn Township, and the list goes on and on with flooding. So we thought we would put a plan together on, on the possibility of trying to allocate a vehicle that would not involve taxpayers' dollars. And we did some brainstorming and we actually uh, had some discussions uh, with our always partners and our, our, our veterans groups and our local civic groups, uh, namely the VFWs, the American Legions, and then uh, several other groups, and some of those folks are here now. I apologize because some had to go back to their, uh, their jobs. Um, my, old coach CI, or, yeah, my old coach CI took center stage before me, so I couldn't push him out of the way. At any rate, um, the vehicle is uh, a UTV. We 
we're able to allocate it from Williamsport Honda, used to be Bob Logue Motorsports. Um, we worked with them, they gave us a really good good price, we were able to purchase the vehicle. The plaques that we'll have today for all these folks that contributed to this vehicle uh, are dated April of 2020. So it'll be memorable, it'll be a COVID plaque because we couldn't, we couldn't go that route last year. So we have actually uh, plaques for those who have uh, so generously com uh, contributed to the project as well as a, a color framed photo um, and we also, you know, knowing the support, and I, and I speak it all the time, knowing the support that the Office of Sheriff gets from the Commissioner's Office, we actually have one for, for each of you Commissioners for your offices, as well as uh, one for Director McDermott. Uh, don't get excited, the, the frames, I'm a, I'm a pretty frugal guy, so I got the frames at Dollar General or Family Dollar, but they look really nice. Um, at any rate, the vehicle is fully equipped. Um, it's got the, the Sheriff's color, the Sheriff's design, the Sheriff's logo, the county incorporated logo, um, it has emergency equipment, it has lighting, it has uh, medical equipment. Um, we do a lot of medical care in the, in the courthouse, as you guys know. I mean, I just got a, a tremendous uh, kudos for an employee in the courthouse. I think, Commissioner, I shared it with you. Yes. I must have gotten eight or ten different calls because we were there so fast and took care of the employee so quickly. Um, and plus, we've had a save in the courthouse with an employee. We had an employee of the court who, uh, who all but went into cardiac arrest and, and we were able to, to resuscitate him. Um, this group raised the funds for this vehicle. Uh, they raised the funds, uh, provided the funds for the trailer for the vehicle. Um, and without that, without their support, it wouldn't have happened. Because in these difficult times, it's difficult to come to the commissioner. It's not, it's not really difficult to say I would come to you, but it just wasn't right given the climate and given the COVID impact we've had. Um, but these folks always are there. You know, we can't, there's one group, and I don't want to single folks out, but when you talk about our, our veterans groups, for instance, they're always there. They're always there to support all of us. And I can't tell you how much they support what we do. In this effort, it was more than the, than the our military members, of whom we're very proud because they've certainly kept us safe. Uh, in this effort, we've had, and I, I need, need to list them, um, we had Red Run, Rod and Gun Club who provided funds. Um, and John Orr, Chief of Austin, longtime Chief of Austin, is a, a leader there. Our own uh, APO Chief Ed McCoy is a member there. Uh, the 9-11 Memorial Coalition, who can say enough about uh, that group? Gary Smith and our, our coalition partners, of which I'm, I'm a member of the board. Um, always there to support us, always there to remember what happened on 9-11. Um, American Legion Post 36 was unable to attend today. Um, American Legion Post 104, um, Jeff Hamilton, there was a little mix up in the date um, and he wasn't able to be here. Um, no fault of his. Actually, Jeff, I think, is with PRC, I believe. Um, Tom Heap was here, our, our registered, our uh, prothonotary, but he had to go make a a phone call so he couldn't stay. He was the he was the president of 104 in Montoursville when uh, when we actually went to them and we actually met all these groups we met with them and we presented the concept and said to them whatever you can do to support if you can't support us financially just continue to, to support law enforcement and, and government effort as we try to make you know try to keep people safe. Uh, Muncie VFW 3428 they're always here we have uh, we have Steve Hafner, um, and then we have the guy next to him. Of course, he had his mask on. I didn't recognize him. I don't know if Dennis looked better with the mask on or off. Dennis, what do you think, Steve? Uh, Dennis Kepner. Dennis Kepner is one of the one of the leaders at the Lycoming County Fair, and we hear there might be actually a fair this year. Dennis, is that what we hear? Um, uh, huge supporters. Um, Rogers Uniform and Jody Rogers, and Jody is here um, today. Um, he was a conduit to help get the vehicle equipped. We met with Jody to try to see how we could do it, how we could minimize the cost and make it, you know, make it approachable when we put the equipment side of the project together. Um, Matorzo Rotary Club and Wendy Weaver. Wendy is the president of Matorzo Rotary. Scott, you probably know Wendy like real well, huh? Thank you for for uh, for the support uh, from Matorzo Rotary. Um, and then we have White Horse Graphics. This stuff that they call wraps. I just got a, 
acclimated to the, a wrap being a sandwich. Now I have to be acclimated to a wrap being something around a vehicle. Is that what you call that? Yeah. Um, Stacy calls it a wrap. She she covered everything that we want to cover and more to sh make it look like a, more of a share vehicle than a, a Honda product. Um, uh, although the Honda sign is obviously on the vehicle. Um, and then Rich Kashera, who actually was the mastermind behind what goes where, what can we fit where, uh, and provide the equipment. And then we had uh, we have a medical bag with the with the vehicle, so we can um, we can actually re respond and then treat if we have to treat people. I, I didn't mention the um, the support that the vehicle provides if we go north for a hunt. We if we have those that leave our our control, whether they're on echo monitor or they leave PRC, we had two. Left PRC, Scott. You were still in office, and they they terrorized the Northern Tier. They were they were hitting buildings. They were hitting cabins every day. They were taking guns. They were taking ATVs and hopping around. and And we couldn't we couldn't keep up with them in cars and you in SUVs. Um, this would give us a little better advantage to be able to find them quicker and stop them quicker uh, before they create the mayhem. I think they were on the loose on the loose about seven or ten days before we find mm -hmm. we're able to catch them. So with that, um, I would, what I'd like to do, Commissioners, is, is I guess, uh, first of all, I'll have comments from the Commissioners, and then we'll give the, for those that are here, we'll get the, the photos and the plaques out for everybody. And then, and then um, kind of icing on the cake is we have it here. We have the UTV here. It's outside. I'd like to go outside if we could when we adjourn the meeting and um, take a picture with everybody and then uh, we can go on our way. Okay. So, Commissioner Mesker. Thank you. I just like to uh, thank everybody. Um, I, this is a evidence of a partnerships throughout the the county and um, the different agencies and and uh, businesses and the veteran groups. And I, I, I know from living in Mentorsville well, just what our Legion Post does uh, for our community. And I know the other legions throughout the the uh, other areas what they do for their communities. But again, this is a countywide effort. Um, of partnerships and working together for a good a, a good cause and we want to thank each one of you um, and to go back and tell your members how important they are and how much we appreciate everything they do. Sheriff, how much was raised? Approximately thirty thousand wow. dollars. Well absolutely I, I echo uh, Commissioner Metzger's comments and and uh, I do want to thank all the all the groups that were involved and it is the kind of um, equipment that is helpful, as the sheriff said, when we have unfortunate situations like the, the escape that happened, uh, but also keeping people safe during the special events that you mentioned and so forth. Um, you know, it is amazing that, that all these groups came together around this project. And how long was it that it took? We started in 2019, but much of it, I know what you're leading up to, much of it was during COVID. Right, and we still had these organizations as we were approaching COVID, who had made the commitment to to the effort. Yeah, and that and that shows a real um, generosity of spirit on their part because we know these organizations really struggled during COVID in terms of fundraising, and all of their efforts uh, were down. So to still be able to come through with this is a real testament to what you all do. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And you have an idea of what we go through as commissioners as well because we're we're. Uh, asked all the time for funds and I I know you know all of your organizations right now are you probably have a lot of people requesting funding uh, for a number of different projects and, and worthy ones as well uh, this vehicle is definitely a plus uh, it's something that uh, you can only dream of because uh, they know they probably wouldn't get it through us uh, very difficult at times, especially during COVID. And uh, it wasn't easy for you over the past year as well. Any of your organizations, it, it's very difficult. So to put that kind of money together uh, to support you know, law enforcement is uh, a great fact. We, mm -hmm. we appreciate it. We were so pleased with the effort. We actually have a, I think the one piece of equipment that I absolutely required and drove uh, Chief Palmer nuts and Sergeant Spiegel nuts, I wanted recognition on this vehicle in the form of a plaque and we actually got that um, from I can't get my names right I know I screwed up 
from Whitehorse. Uh, Stacy actually put the names of each of the contributors on a plaque, so when it is out there, the public will see it when we're at the events. Yeah, th thank you, Sheriff, for spearheading it and, and for uh, being sensitive to the taxpayers by asking these groups to, to help us. Th thank you. If we could have them come up. Absolutely. You see yeah. their, who, who, so who else here? Stacy's here. Wendy's here. Steve is here. And his helper, Dennis. <laughs> I didn't forget you. Come on up, you guys. I don't want to miss anybody. Everybody who's, oh, Jody's here. Jody, I mentioned you, didn't I? Whew, thank the Lord. Come on up, Joe. Measures, come on. Come on down. Do you want pictures? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I gotta get this in order. This is this is like the firing you squad, right? Ladies first. Hold them. I just want. I'll be happy just to get you the right plaque. Yes. What do we have? Okay. We'll we'll do monthly post. 3428 first, and I'll show the commissioners. Well, and if you'll notice the date, yes. <laughs> and then there's that's what each of you will get, oh, and, and, nice. and they will get. We took it in front of Wahoo Drive Memorial. Yeah. yeah. So. Who did the plaques? Uh, they were done by Keystone Advertising Specialties. Okay. Everything we had done was is we tried to do locally. Okay. We tried to do it in the county. So nice. why don't rather than you have to hold this and then drop it. Why don't you just see these guys and then I'll give it to you over here. Mm -hmm. No, do you want a one group picture with all of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we'll get the plaques yeah. afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go come on up. Right here in the middle, folks. Jody? Mm -hmm. Sergeants? Oh. Sergeants? Right here, we'll fit. We'll get it. Thank you. She's going to move to the back of the room, isn't she? <laughs> We're going to have to turn. We're going to have to turn to fit. So turn like half the one way, half the other. Squeeze in. I'm just as big that way. Do you want the short guys? <laughs> Where can I have the short guys? All right. Ready? Yeah, you can take your mask off. You've got to be able to take them. Larry, did you want one or Mike? Mike? Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you, everybody. Now, we have, uh, this is time. We're going to go outside. We're going to go outside to the. I guess uh, you want to adjourn the meeting, and then we'll go outside. Things. Yep. About five, five minutes. Okay. Just, just sit down, folks, and we'll. We'll give you your. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do? Put them back in? Or leave them out? How are you? Yes, we could. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're at Commissioner Comet. I think I'm going to hold my hand first. You think so? Okay. Okay. So, uh, on Saturday, uh, Noah had his cleanup work day, very successful. Uh, it taught me a number of things, being out there for about five hours, uh, and how plastic breaks down. And, and I mean, it was it was amazing. That uh, as you go to pick up plastic, some of it's the lids, the coffee cups, and whatnot nice and then then you have them that's been under the sun for a while and you pick them up they splinter and then others just disintegrate and so now you understand how it can get into the waterways and whatnot I got my, I got a, a good education by his day and we appreciate uh, Noah for his effort uh, Gabriel, thank you for your child he did a fantastic job uh, we'll, we'll be grateful forever uh, I'd just like to mention that the action taken by the commissioners today, so that the public understands, we don't believe that there's any fraud, any criminal activity, or anything like that uh, on either side. Uh, there's just a few mistakes that are being made 
uh, and and the people need to be trained the correct way. So um, uh, hopefully this can be resolved without going into any litigation, uh, and uh, I'm I'm sure it will, and uh, will be better for it. And then. Uh, my last comment is I spoke to many, many business owners around this county, and our workforce is in trouble. I mean, uh, people just aren't taking guns, and it's hard to believe that they'll go apply but say, I don't want it, for unemployment. We need to stop doing what we're doing on a federal level okay and state and get people to work okay when when you're feeding them and you're giving them extra money it's not working for local businesses we're not a socialistic country yet thank god but we're moving in that direction and if we don't correct certain policies today you know give it up because it's it's not going to be any bit easier and especially on our workforce, the people that want to work. There are plenty of people out there working. And working jobs that are, you know, $10, $12 an hour, okay? And, and they're sitting there questioning why. Why should I be doing this? And, and as we see what's happening, more and more people are starting to increase their pay of the employees. And I don't see that as a bad, you know, uh, move. But in the end, the consumer pays. For, for everything, and especially at, at the end of the year when you have to pay your taxes. I just want to add to Commissioner Sarr's statements that we do have to get our, our workers back to, on, on the jobs. And um, you turn on the TV, you open up the newspaper, and you just see um, there's so many jobs available. We had a job fair locally about three weeks ago. 35 very good employers had over a thousand jobs available locally 125 people showed up for those jobs and uh, the incentives to sign on bonuses as much as, as five thousand uh, dollars and they can't get people to work down in Mc, down in Florida Florida a McDonald's if you show up for a job interview they'll give you fifty dollars at a local McDonald's in Florida. There's so many jobs available, but as the Commissioner stated, when you're handing out federal money to stay home and encouraging people to stay home, you're keeping the unemployment rate high and you're using a virus as an excuse to keep people unemployed. And you're promoting laziness. And that's not what America is about. America is about hard work, it's about getting out there and getting a job done taking pride in what you do and uh, developing that work ethic which is disappearing because people are sitting home collecting all these free handouts that our grandchildren and great grandchildren are going to have to pay back because it's not free money and you're going to be paying back higher in taxes um, and, and that's coming down the road when you when you open up your taxes in a year or so and you're paying more into it you're going to see that that stimulus check is now triple and paying it back. So we have to make sure that uh, we get people back to work and, and stop incentivizing laziness and staying home to collect free money. Let me finish uh, on two. two I got one more thing. Okay. Go. Sorry. Another thing I'd like to, to go over is the uh, the ERAP program, which is the county, like Cumming County Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Um, we've We've had step allocating those monies. Uh, to date, there has been 448 applications that have been submitted and dropped off at step. Of the 448 applications, 110 have been fully processed and paid out. And there's another 38 applications that are ready for processing. So to date, out of the uh, ERAP program, there has been 321,000 three hundred and forty three dollars and seventy three cents paid out to landlords and utilities as of last Friday 
and staff will continue to uh, run check runs every week for the emergency rental assistance program and uh, they've been a great asset to our community in so many ways and helping us uh, distribute these monies to the tenants the landlords and the utilities through this uh, pandemic and we want to thank them okay, go ahead so um you know, earlier we heard from uh, Mr. Stout and Mr. York and the folks who have been here about the difficulties our fire companies. Uh, the commissioners uh, are looking at, after meeting with MAMA, which is the uh, Muncie Area Mutual Aid Association, and uh, hearing from the fire chiefs, uh, meetings that were organized by uh, Jonathan Baker and Al Little, the commissioners are going to look at seeing if we can't do something uh, with some of the COVID funds to try to help out. Uh, we were sensitive to the fact that they all have lost the ability to raise revenue and we had uh, for example mama is an organization that does training and they typically make about twenty five thousand dollars each year um, on the training event where they bring six seven hundred uh, firefighters from the area uh, around uh, they lost twenty five thousand each year and that money goes to buy equipment and for further training so they've lost fifty thousand dollars just mama we heard reports from fire company chiefs uh, lost you know uh clinton township i see mr stout has left they estimate between 80 and 120 thousand in uh money they couldn't have because they couldn't rent out the hall to have weddings during covid uh other fire companies that have lost so we would encourage the fire companies uh to send us what they have not been able to raise so that we can get educated and try to address that I wanted to point something out which is very interesting. I sit on the Pen Central Pennsylvania Workforce Development Board as a representative from the commissioners. The Central PA Workforce Board is nine counties in the region. Center, Clinton, Columbia, Lycoming, Mifflin, Montour, Northumberland, Snyder, and Union. The area is the size of Connecticut and Rhode Island combined. But the population is very small, right? We all know that. Um, interesting, gentlemen, that in March, 2020 uh, m there were 5,370 unemployment claims in March 2021 there were 1,170 so people are are getting back to work but this is really interesting in terms of the job the difficulty finding employers so they look we're getting ready to prepare another report and that's the board's job is to try to find out what is the gap in skills how can we you know because we have these people many of whom want to work but they don't have the skill set from the basic skill set of showing up on the job don't have your cell phone out to the more complicated skill set so in the period uh, from 2015 to 2025 there was a decrease in the population in the region of 6,500. The labor force in 20, 2008 and 2012, we had 310,000 people in the labor force. Those are people typically between the ages of like 16 and 59 who are able to work. They're not disabled. They In November 2020, there were 289,800. There was a decline of 20,200 eligible workers. Now, why is that? Some of it is people die. We have an aging population. We have a population where people are retiring. We, we see Candace today had 20 years. Well, you know, Candace is not going to work for another 30 years, right? right. Uh, yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the problem is that our, the, the, the declining <laughs> population is creating a situation where we don't have people to fill the jobs, which is what, what you guys uh, were talking about. There are two challenges and a third that I, I have added. The, the, the one that they identified is how do we stop the brain drain, which means that all these kids who were here for the basketball team today, right, some of them are going to go to the University of Pittsburgh. They're going to get out of the University of Pittsburgh or St. Vincent's, wherever they go, and they're going to end up living there, right? Pennsylvania, at least they'll be in Pennsylvania, but Pennsylvania has a reputation of educating folks and they move elsewhere, right? The other thing is how do we attract people to our area? And what the commissioners did today on that timber run is to try to bring jobs to the area. So we're, we're, we're aware of this and we're trying to figure it out. The third one 
that I think is really critical. The report doesn't identify it, but a number of the commissioners agreed. How do we build an organic workforce? If we look at this problem of declining population, I've said this before, we have to almost project out 15 years and say, okay, these kids who are three years old now, how do we get them to the point when they're 18 that they can actually come out and take a job and, and have the soft skills? And, and hopefully we've addressed it through Ready Rosie. I'm hoping we can address it in other ways with uh, early learning for children. You know, those years are key. So I just thought it was fascinating that we lost 20,200 uh, in, our, in, our, in our workforce. And we're hoping to try to turn it around. But it's, it's certainly the biggest challenge uh, that faces us is population recovery. How do we keep the population here? So all the things that we're doing, hopefully, we'll add to it. Okay, thank you. Any public comment at this time? We have anything on the uh, online? No. Okay. Hearing none, our meeting will be adjourned. Uh, our next meeting will be uh, next Tuesday, April the 27th, here at 10 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We're going to go outside. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <coughs> Pay bills, pay employees, pay bills. Yes. So we got to make sure that stuff does not happen. Thanks, you, Shane. I mean, the letter she sent us is like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So. So those bills would be anything from paychecks to anything. Vendors. Yeah. Could be anything. And she's threatened us before. Yeah. To do this, uh, we just need to get the. We, we just need questions. She's, she's, she's threatening. She's threatening. Oh, many times. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Not to me. To him, he's been here a lot longer. Okay. Last year, she did. One time to us when I was here. Yes. Okay. That was during March, right during COVID. Last 